now let us try to understand the talk that a current carrying loop experiences in the presence of a magnetic field okay and as we do that we'll gradually develop the concept of the magnetic dipole till now we have understood what an electric dipole is right but since but since there are no magnetic poles that we can see as such right so they are not kind of point charges which are separated so let us try to see how a magnetic dipole is defined right now this is an arrangement that is actually the arrangement of an electric motor right we'll soon see so so this this arrangement that you see here this is nothing but an electric motor okay now in an electric motor what happens is it takes an in in an electric motor the motor takes in an input of of the electrical energy or electrical power and it gives out the the mechanical power right in contrast a generator had it been a generator it would have taken a a mechanical power input and it would have given you out an electrical power input right that's how these two differ now let us first of all analyze what is happening in this circuit before we go and and try to understand what is, what is the torque experienced by this loop now what is happening here is is this is an electric circuit okay this is an electric external circuit that is connected to this okay now this electric circuit this electric circuit due to the positive nature of current here gives a current in this direction right which 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 you later see moving in this direction right these two okay these two are brushes this and this okay and this brush is static okay this brush is static these two these the two that 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 i'm sharing right now this is the first one and, and this is the second one this is the brush right these two pink ones are brushes and they are static they do not move okay these are two this and this these are two permanent magnets okay in a motor scenario in the in the case of a real practical real life motor they are not permanent magnets rather they are an electromagnet fine but to understand you just just try to understand because then the, the then the circuit will become a bit too complicated right you you then have to understand how the how the uh, the, the the current is fed to these two iron pieces so that they act as a magnet okay so that's why you consider currently both of them as a permanent magnet so that they are creating a field and and how are they creating a field they are creating a field that originates on the north pole and terminates on the south pole okay there is something like that okay so it is something like this do we get the point these are the field lines correct 
now let us come back to the construction so so these two are static brushes this this circular thing that you see let me kind of color it differently this circular thing that you see here this rather the semicircular thing right the semicircular thing that you see here and here that is called a a slip ring okay so this is called a slip ring okay this is a slip ring okay and as the name suggests it actually slips how will it slip it will slip only when this is mobile this is moving there is one critical thing missing in this whole of the diagram that is a shaft right so 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 there is a there would have been in, in a real motor there is a shaft okay a solid air iron shaft over which this slip ring is mounted and this shaft kind of goes ahead and then becomes a rotor okay i am just trying to give you an idea this kind of becomes a rotor like that okay and this rotor goes like this okay it goes something like that okay something like that and then is something like this and this understand so so this would have been otherwise a rotor right so so let me go this would have been a circular rotor right in which there would have been slots and it is not only a single wire it, this 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 loop that you see here there is not only one of them rather there are many such 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 wires which are kind of wound like this into the slots that are cut in the rotor right understand and this end of the rotor there it goes goes out see see this is one of the ends of the rotors the other end kind of goes out okay and and there is a bearing over which this end this end and 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 the rear end of the rotor gets supported so do not ever feel that this whole thing is hanging in air okay and and somehow is rotating that is not possible okay so it is pretty rigidly mounted here there will be a bearing there will be a housing in which it will go and there will be a bearing over which it will rotate right <laughs> there also there will be a housing okay the you must have seen the end covers of the motors right from the end of the motor you will be able to remove a circular cover okay in that cover you have this housing mm -hmm. right okay in that cover you have this housing mounted so it is pretty rigid rigid properly supported system okay just by the face of it it looks as if it is all hanging in air and suddenly now i'll say that it starts rotating so that actually absolutely does not make any sense okay this is just to make you understand the actual nature of of this motor okay and there will be so many such wires understand now i'll i'll undo all that rotors business that i drew so that so that you you understand the the simple circuit that is drawn right so so let me undo that rotor part that i drew because then that that will confuse you that will confuse you so i have removed i have in a sense removed the the rotor business right so 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 it is not there 
fine fine okay we'll just have one loop one wire over which we'll try to understand what is the torque applied right fine now what happens now what happens let us again come back to this this pushes a current like this okay so the current and and, and this this carbon brush this carbon brush the, there is a connection to this carbon brush this let me let me kind of show that connection so this is connected okay this carbon brush is made up of graphite so it is a conducting material right mm -hmm. so as the current goes in it actually goes into this and and this brush this carbon brush the graphite brush that is in contact with the copper slip ring right this slip ring is made up of copper and this brush is made up of of graphite understand graphite right it is made up of graphite so so this current moves in okay comes to this brush since it is conducting it goes on to this slip ring and this loop the end of the loop is is braced it is solidly connected to this ring okay so the ring and the loop together rotate while the brush is static understand there is there is another arrangement full arrangement of ensuring that but we don't go into that Let, let's take it from me that the brush is static and this whole thing along with the rotor that i had drawn that keeps on rotating how that rotates we'll see so the uh, ring and uh, this green one the the green one along with this loop right okay. this blue one that rotates okay because this is on the shaft this is rigidly mounted on the shaft then this 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 thing is connected to to this ring okay and and this whole loop is then embedded into the slots of the rotor okay so 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 it will start moving with the rod rotor yeah yeah so then what happens to the brush at that time the brush the brush remains static the brush is a static one that does not move so the ring slips over the brush that is the reason it is called a slip ring okay get that now what happens is is the current comes from here goes to the slip ring from the slip ring goes to the loop and it it kind of continues its journey like that you see so you see that journey this comes here and and i is in the direction that is shown here correct it goes ahead turns like this right and then turns here and and you see this direction of i right so it comes here all the way comes to the ring from the ring goes to the brush from the brush goes out like that and and this is the direction that is again shown and goes to the negative terminal is that okay that is one full electric path right yes. now in this scenario if you see there is a there is a current carrying conductor inside a magnetic field and according to whatever we learned the force is given by i l cross b there will be a force on the conductor right correct so this is the direction of i this is the direction of b let, let, let's try to think let's try to think this is the correction this, this is the direction of b this is the direction of i right what will be the direction of i l cross b this is b this is this is i that is this Down is way. l okay what is i l cross b i l cross b this will come to b through the smaller angle which is this so looking from upwards it will be clockwise okay so it will be clockwise and and if there is a clockwise movement looking from upward then the force will be downward so so this is the force that that this experiences right 
so so the force that that this experiences is will be downward right downward I, i'm showing this so the left hand wire experiences a force in the downward direction okay this is downward correct right? so why will the moment be in clockwise direction and not in anti clockwise like the angle that is a good question you you look at it from uh, from the above this is your eye this is the direction of your eye right this is the direction of your eye this is the direction of your b this is the direction of your b right this is your direction of b now whether you look at it from upwards or downwards does not matter but if you look at it from upwards this i has to this this l is in the direction of i right so this vector th this is your l vector right this is in a sense l vector l vector has to go to the b vector through the smaller angle this is the smaller angle no so if you look at it from upwards what is the direction in which it is moving it is moving in it is moving in clockwise clockwise direction if there is a right handed screw moving in a clockwise direction so if if there is a right handed screw moving in a clockwise direction like that okay where will it go inward okay so if these are the threads say these are the threads of the of the screw it will go down that is what i am trying to say so the force on the left hand conductor will be downwards now let us come to this so so there is a current on the on the right on the right hand conductor there is a current in coming towards us right so so this is the current current coming towards us and the field going like that we have to make the field and the current we have to make the field and the current this is my l vector this is my b vector and a prerequisite for finding out the cross product is that they should be co initial the vectors should be co initial vectors so i l cross b will be looking from upwards it will be counter clockwise and it will come out of of this so if if you kind of kind of move it like that counter clockwise then it will start coming towards you and that is the direction of the force that is the direction of the force this is the direction of the force right i l will go to b from the small angle this is the small angle why is l going to be now yeah why is l going to be now why is l going to be what so earlier we took b to l no l to b this is l this is the formula right l goes to b the first vector goes to the second okay after being made co initial and the tails getting hinged rigidly you try to move them in the direction in so that the first goes on to the second through the smaller angle right right do we understand yes. fine so so the force here is upwards so here the force is downwards here the force is upwards right so so the force here is upwards now what happens these two forces are equal these two forces are equal right these two forces are equal so the net force on this loop is zero so its center of mass will not move translationally there will be no translational linear movement of this but since the the line of action of the force does not pass through the axis it will start rotating okay this is the axis right this is the rotation axis that that, that is shown here rotation axis fine and and we are given this distance this distance is a correct these forces are the same why because their their lengths are the same the lengths of these wires and the currents they are carrying and the magnetic field in which they are present they are all the same rather you can see that l is absolutely perpendicular to b so so as far as the magnitude of this is concerned i can write this as i l into b into sin 90 that will be i l into b 
right and since i is the same in both the conductors the length of the conductors is the same that is equal to b no, the value of b in which they are immersed is the same the the magnitude of the force that they experience will be the same it will remain a constant correct yeah it will remain a constant throughout it will remain a constant throughout yes that's true so so the whole thing kind of looks like this right let's try to 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 see if we we if we if we look from here right if kind of we we kind of look from here okay here then then this is this is a whole whole length of a right this this length is is length a okay and a force acting to the right a force is acting upwards and to the left a force is acting downwards and and this is how it looks right this is the light right flank this is the left one force acting downward force acting upward and, and this whole length is a and this is the center this is my this is my axis of rotation right correct now let us try to find out the torque what is the torque okay torque is defined as as r cross f what is r r is r is the vector that goes from the axis to the point where force is acting so this is my r r vector right and my f vector this okay this vector it either either this vector slides here so that it becomes coincident or this r slides ahead so that this becomes coincident right so let us say i shift my f here and and kind of align it like that okay so it is and and this is f2 the value of f2 and f1 they are the same right so this is f2 okay now what r and f are making an angle of 90 degrees and if r this r vector goes goes to f it looking from here it is counter clockwise and it will come towards us right so the torque is coming towards us right so so if if i if i try to show the torque the torque is something like this here due to this arm fine so if i am if i am concerned about the magnitude then it is r into f into sin 90 and it is acting towards us so it is r and, and what is the length of r r is nothing but magnitude of of r is nothing but a upon 2 so it is a upon 2 a upon 2 into force right the the force we will we'll put later f into sin 90 is 1 that is that is say torque torque 2 Now what is torque one? It is again the same thing, right? This is my r vector, okay? This is my r vector. Yeah, I'm being a bit straighter, right? So so this is my r vector, and my f vector again has to be shifted so as to make it go initial. So I I have shifted this vector here. right keeping the length the same i have slightly increased the length right so so the length has to be the same it is the same vector just moved parallelly and r cross f right r is this vector crossed with f1 is what it 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 again comes towards us it is it is it is counter clockwise so so torque one is nothing but r f sin 90 and that is nothing but a upon 2 into f into 1 so that is this and since we saw both the both the this is also coming out exactly towards us now these two vectors are collinear acting in the same direction so they'll just their magnitudes will simply add and i'll get the total torque as tau 1 plus tau 2 okay so it is coming out of the paper 
out of the screen in this case right and and this too comes out of the screen comes out of the screen right and hence they add their magnitudes straightway adds because they are parallel vectors and that becomes a upon 2 into f into a upon 2 into f that is nothing but a into f correct that is nothing but a into f now now let's go back to what our f was f is nothing but i into length into b and length here was found out to be to be this was the length of the conductor isn't it the length of the conductor is is b correct so that is that is i into b into capital b is is quite something else the small b is the length capital b is the magnetic field right so it will not be b square fine so 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 this can be written as a into into i into b into b correct get that now that becomes that becomes i into a into b into b get that now this a into b right if you look at this rectangular loop then this a multiplied by this b b is nothing but the area of the loop right is nothing but the area of the loop so this is this is nothing but i into capital a into b right into b so so our top suddenly becomes i into area into into the magnetic field correct now before before i maybe forget and move ahead let let me also kind of come back to this loop this loop as you must have seen or, or, or this discussion must have come to your mind that this loop also is carrying a current in this direction right? and also currents in these directions right is it not what about the what about the talk on them Currently, they are parallel and anti-parallel, and hence there will be no talk. Yeah. Currently, the moment it starts moving, things will change. They will not be parallel or anti-parallel, both of them. But then we'll see what happens. So currently, in this scenario, we are not concerned about the talks because because they do not exist on 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 this on this wire and 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 on these fragments of wires here right do we understand because because if you see the the line of b and see the line of i they are parallel is it not that's fine okay right the uh, directions so that so that's why we are calling this anti parallel but the cross product of an anti parallel vector will also be zero right because the sign 1 and 0 sin 180 degrees is zero. is zero right so so do we understand so our torque suddenly becomes i a into b now torque is a vector quantity right so i would like to assign a vector to this and 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 b has a fixed direction and what is the direction of the torque we saw that torque was towards us, right? These are certain weirdness of the ro rotational motion that we have done in class 11th. Okay, so you can go back and see those videos. The, the whole thing is rotating. Rotating? Rotating what direction? This, this, is, this is supposed to go down. This is, this is supposed to go up. The whole thing starts rotating like this. The way it is shown here, right? The way it is shown here. So if you're looking from here, looking from here, the whole thing starts rotating counterclockwise, correct? It starts rotating counterclockwise. So at least in this case, I have, I have 
the the talk I, I write it here right so I have a talk that is a that is pointing towards us this is my talk I have a thing called I a right what were we given we were given that our talk is is I a into B for single turn of wire right for single turn wire what if the wire is not single turn wire if it's a multi turn wire this is only single turn no okay. if there were two such if there are two rounds of this no. what should have happened twice of that no so 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 this talk should become n i a into b magnitude wise for multi turn wires multi turn wire n number of turns n number of turns capital n number of turns yes. right <laughs> correct okay now i have to assign a vector notation to it okay so first thing is that b is a vector okay this is a vector right this is a vector this is a vector either the whole thing is a scalar so that a scalar multiplication with a vector becomes a vector, vector. or this also has to be a vector now i is not a vector n is not a vector but a we have earlier assigned as a vector so there is a vector quantity here as well so it cannot be a scalar multiplication so it is in fact multiplication of two vectors now two vectors are multiplied in two ways one is the dot product another is the cross product the dot product is called the scalar product because its resultant is a scalar so it has to be the vector product that is the cross product between the two and the thing has to be such that the talk is directed out of the screen correct the talk has to be directed out of the screen now if i take this as a vector then what is the direction in which i can take this as a vector okay what is the direction a is a vector how had we defined the area as a vector you have to take a vector perpendicular to the plane of the vector now there are two perpendiculars up and down okay now this is also carrying a current so so if i take the area vector as per the right hand rule that means if i curl my fingers if i curl the fingers of my right hand like that okay like 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 that okay over my knuckles like that right then then in what direction does my thumb point it it will point point downwards right no no uh, that's that's pretty shabby sort of figure that i made so let me let me try it once more so so what happens is if i curl the fingers of my right hand uh, my wrist will be first of all visible like this right and my fingers will sort of curl like that say 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 this is one of the fingers okay below that will go other fingers no so hold on so it's something like that and and say this knuckle and then the other finger will go like this and and wrap below this correct and your knuckle and knuckle and knuckle and this is your wrist right and okay this is your wrist and the thumb will point 
down. No? And this is your wrist and maybe a watch that you are wearing or something. Spell of tears. Did we get that? No? 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 Yes, sir. So, so, so this will start pointing downwards, right? So, so this, this, this fellow, this NIA, that starts pointing downwards, right? Like that. Okay? This, this is the direction of NIA, right? NIA. And, and in what direction? Which should be kept first? This NIA, when it goes to this, looking from this direction, looking from this direction, it is counterclockwise and it comes towards me. And that was the direction in which my torque had come out, right? So, so it should be, if, if I want to assign a a vector notation to it, then it should be NIA crossed with B and and the direction of this is 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 by the right hand rule it, at the outset i told you there are there are hundreds of right hand rules and you should understand the context in which things are being talked about right so this also follows a right hand rule the ampere's law also follows a right hand rule right There's so many things fine so so n i a cross b okay this is this is the 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 magnetic domain this is the magnetism, magnetism. Okay. This is magnetism. Now, now let us come to the, the electrostatics. What was the formula for torque in the electrostatics? For electrostatics, it was P cross e right now let us let us kind of compare them this p was nothing but but what electric dipole moment this is electric dipole moment this is electric field now let us start comparing so if this is electric field, then I have then I have a magnetic field here. Okay. So whatever is this, this is my electric dipole moment, then I should call this as the magnetic dipole moment. Is it not? It should be the magnetic dipole moment isn't it and this i decide to name as m okay M -A -A. so m cross b now the things are complete tau is m cross b right so so and this NIA becomes my magnetic dipole moment. So I define M as the magnetic dipole moment, dipole moment, moment, and and it's it is NIA where the direction of A is defined by the right hand thumb rule okay so 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 direction of a defined by the right hand right hand thumb rule thumb rule right so you curl your fingers in the direction of of the of the in the direction of the
current and your thumb will tell you the direction of m right now what happens is 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 if if you have your m let us say like that okay so if, if this is behind you and this is kind of this then by right hand rule if this is the direction of current m points in this direction and let us say if i have my b also in the same direction somehow then what do you think will be the torque there is no angle being made between these two and and the torque will be zero torque will be zero right rather a, a, a zero vector but normally we say that it is zero right a vector cannot be equated to a scalar so we call this a null vector right so, so torque is zero or, or you can say that torque is zero <coughs> okay what if what if there is an angle between the two right so 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 if suppose instead of this things are like that so so the coil is is like that this is i so that it's it's m is pointing like that right and b is is in the same direction so so b is say something like that now what is it what is the, the the direction of m cross b Outside. M cross B will be inside. M will go to B if these are in the plane no, inside. clockwise, so inside, right? So, so it will be kind of kind of this inside. Okay, this is into the screen. This this torque. And when is the, when when the torque is like that? In what direction will it rotate? it is again a right hand rule you know so you put your fingers your your thumb around along mm -hmm. this okay and you curl your fingers that will be the direction of the rotation so the direction right. of rotation will be like that okay so with this you will come to the conclusion that that this thing if if it is like that the the torque acts in such a direction that it tries to bring this to be through the smaller angle it tries to bring you to B through the smaller angle, so it will try to bring you like that. So, so, so if you were maybe kind of something like this, okay, something like that, so that M was M was something like this, then the torque would have been in such a direction that it would have taken you towards this. Okay, you can actually see that happening. So, so in a sense, if you are not aligned with the field, the torque, the, the field produces a torque on you such that you kind of get aligned with it. And only when you get aligned with it will it stop. Otherwise, it will keep, keep on poking you, right? It will keep on trying to align you with the field and, and that is what the torque is, correct? We will we'll see what happens when when this this whole thing moves starts moving and and then what happens right but but i'll, I'll break this video here just because it's getting a bit too long